In this video, we are going to learn about eat, the factor that can make or break your blog. Wow. Okay, <laughs> enough with the theatrics. And even though I was so tempted to make jokes about burritos and cheese fries, I decided to leave that on my blog. Okay, so let's just jump into it. What is eat? Eat is a term that Google came up with and is used in the Search Evaluator Guidelines PDF, all right? So EAT stands for Expertise, Authoritativeness, and Trustworthiness. So as a blogger or niche site owner, why should you care about EAT? Good question. If your site shows EAT, which is again, Expertise, Authoritativeness, and Trustworthiness, it will achieve the following. Help your site rank well in Google, build trust with the human reader, show that you are an authority or expert in the niche topic, help other sites want to link to your blog, compel readers to want to share your content, and last but not least, help grow your brand's reputation. So, it's important for blogs and niche sites because it demonstrates expertise authority authority and trustworthiness to potential customers, not just readers of your blog. So customers are more likely to buy those recommended products from you or your product from your blog if they perceive your blog as a credible source of information. If they don't trust you as a resource or an influencer, why would they buy something that you've suggested? Think about how you buy products and who you trust when you're visiting blogs. So ultimately, it is super important for blogs and these sites because it helps to build that trust with potential customers and convince them to purchase products from the site. So I want to address YMYL and how it relates to EAT here. So just in case you don't know YMYL, stands for your money, your life, and is another term that Google came up with. Basically, it refers to niches that are in the financial realm and the health realm. Basically, years ago, SEOs and bloggers thought that it only like mostly mattered in the YMYL niches because YMYL niches are something that Google scrutinizes a lot because they have such a huge impact on people seeking that information, right? So you want to get health advice from a doctor for finances, want to take financial advice from someone who has expertise in that niche, right? But after reading the most recent version of the search evaluators guidelines they also consider hobbies important enough and i've seen enough weird stuff in the search engines to say that you know what it applies to all types of blogs and sites because google has a huge job of fighting disinformation they don't want to serve up sites that are faking credibility because it has ramifications for the end user, right? So it's really to protect all of us. Would you want to buy products from someone who's not experienced in that niche, right? So do you want to get guitar lessons from someone who's not really a guitarist? <laughs> After reading the search evaluator guidelines PDF, it literally says that Google is constantly improving their search algorithm to recognize and reward sites that show eat and de-rank those that don't. So it's super important to create or establish EAT on your blog. Now I'm going to jump into 11 tips I have for you for creating or improving EAT on your blog or niche site. So one, create factually accurate and well-written content. Think about it this way. When you land on a site or on a page, right? If it's riddled with bad grammar or mistakes uh, or use by a factual inaccuracy i tend to just exit out of the site like i don't give it a second chance so make sure that you're creating factually and well-written content number two create helpful content for your audience there was the helpful content update recently so there's huge emphasis on this number three 
create unique content. If you're doing product reviews, it helps if you have pictures of you using the product or videos so that it shows up as unique content. So it's not a generic picture or it doesn't look like you're faking a product review right? You want to show legitimacy here. And Google wants to serve helpful content or unique content like this that is good for its search engine user or helpful for them. So they want to see that you're doing legitimate product reviews. So use videos, pictures, all of it. Four, cite sources in your content. So if it's something research-based, Go ahead and link out to established and well-known organizations or experts. Five, reach out to experts, okay? So if you're reading an informational blog post, uh, it's really cool if you reach out to another expert and you can quote them in your article, right? It just helps build that credibility and trustworthiness in your site. Number six, update or refresh old content. So I'm guilty of this part myself and bloggers, a lot of bloggers do this too. We become so focused on new content that we often don't just take a pause and look at our old content. So this is something I started doing last year is prioritizing and updating old uh, content that just needed to be updated. Not every article needs to be updated, but if, if there's some new information about it, you can go ahead and update it. Number seven, proper about page, which reveals the author's experience or expertise in that niche. So this part is really important. You need to demonstrate whoever's creating the content, the, whether it's one author or multiple authors, you need to showcase their expertise, their experience within that niche on the about page and do it in as much detail as possible. That helps build credibility with your visitors as well. I love checking out about pages because it's a subconscious check mark like, oh, cool. Okay. Number eight, don't display grotesque or interruptive ads. It's self-explanatory. It ruins the user's experience. It can contribute to slow loading times and should be avoided in Google rounds on this. Number nine, only recommend helpful products to your readers that you know will help them fix a solution or a problem, right? So self-explanatory, but worth mentioning. Number 10, brand reputation. So this is an interesting one. If you are a business and you don't have any reviews, that's okay. That's not held against you. If you have mostly positive reviews and a few negative ones, that's okay. No one wants the negative reviews, but it's, I mean, that's, that's normal. Now, if you have quite a few negative reviews and they're outperforming your positive reviews, that's something to be concerned about. Again, not having any reviews is okay and is not counted against your site, I should say, or business or brand. Number 11. Receiving links and mentions from credible websites. So, of course, we would all love a link from Wikipedia <laughs> or other trusted sources on the web, but that's not easy to do. Just know that if you're producing really quality content, super informational, people are going to want to link to your content over time. Okay, over time you build these naturally and you can always get interviewed on another, on another site. You can contribute to quotes and stuff. So receiving links and mentions from credible sites, I had to mention that because of course that builds credibility fast. I'm a believer that as long as you're building something legitimate, you're, you're going to attract the right type of attention. So you're going to get the right type of link over time. Anyways, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them.